Kogomi Mountain Ramen. Japan is full of seasonal events. So much of Japanese traditional culture is dependent on the seasons. And one of my favorite things every year is foraging for wild mountain vegetables in the spring. In Japan, sansai literally means mountain vegetables. It is so much fun to go out in the mountains, put on knee-high plastic boots, work clothes, and look for fresh vegetables that are just so healthy. I mean, they've got to be nurtured with all of the rich mineral content of this soil beyond organic, the peak of good for you things to eat here. Today um, is April 11th. It's a Saturday and we're pretty early in the season. We're looking for kogomi, which is a fiddleheads type of fern. We're also picking up some karadachi yomogi. It's really great as tempura. And of course, we're looking for fukki too. And as always, watch out for torikabuto, the uh, dangerous poison, which is known as monk's hood or wolf's bane. Might also pick some hawasabi, some leaf wasabi today. We'll see. I'm out as always with my mountain teacher, Haruo. Haruo is a mountain lover without equal. He is just fantastic and fun to be with. Now, when you're differentiating between kogumi, you want to remember it's that nice deep green color. It's not um, hairy particularly. And you, well, you just get used to looking at it. No, not these. Not kogumi, no. Saiko no kogumi. Yatta. This is the kokomi that we are looking for, though here it's rather too late. But you can see this is what they look like before they eventually open out into full ferns. It's interesting, the higher you go upstream, the later they are in their development, even though it's cooler up here. Here you can see there's lots and lots of kokomi all along this slope. That's pretty respectable. This is good. This is good. Ooh, that up there is perfect. This is pretty good. Yeah. You see, it's usually, yeah, on these slopes along mountain streams that you find so many things. That's also the case with kokomi today. Haro-san's mind is like a computer, searching, searching. This is perfect, nice and thick and tightly curled. Ideal. Wow, it's all over here. It's always just hiding. And in terms of how you prepare it, they're great as tempura. You can just boil them lightly and put them into ramen, which is what we're maybe gonna do for lunch today. They're really healthy, fresh. They don't have a strong taste particularly, but they've got a great texture. just is sticking out everywhere. Do you see it everywhere there? See, it's just perfect. This is perfect. Some of this is too thin, but a lot of this is just ideal. Bam. How do you eat it? With uh, wasabi, you can recognize how wasabi um, by these little white flowers they get during the season. And of course they have leaves that are this shaped right here. And this you can get throughout the season. This grows larger and larger, but he said it's most delicious in the spring when it's still young like this. Watch out, this deadly poison is everywhere. And now when there's not much undergrowth, it really sticks out. You can really tell, again, it's got this weird unfurling sort of thing, usually at the tips, 
leaves look like this, and it's usually got a little bit of redness around the green stem. And this will grow really tall, and it'll get purple flowers later in the summertime. And it's growing right next to the hawasabi, the leaf wasabi, and so be careful you don't cut some of that and bring it with you. You wouldn't want to cook that with it. But this is all poison or edible. Look, poison, edible, there's the wasabi that's edible, flowers, just about everything around here has some meaning for humans, if you know what to look at. Hmm. We're gonna go up the stream. This is perfect. This is, of course, a fuki, which is popular as tempura. Also, you can uh, boil it and cut it up and make it into uh, bake miso, a sort of miso paste. And uh, when it grows later in the season, you eat the stem. Perfect fuki no to, which or bake is the local dialect for it. Okay. This one is also just perfect. However, when you're out foraging for wild vegetables, you really do want to watch out for bears because this is their season and their territory. And they're also out sometimes competing for exactly the same things that you're picking. So you want to watch out. You should definitely wear a bear bell, which I'm not wearing right now, but Haruasan is wearing. And I do have also my pepper spray here with me. And so uh, we're covered. Also, if you're talking, you probably won't bump into him, but you want to just be careful. The few times when you do hear about people being severely injured by bears, it's generally people who are out foraging for wild vegetables in a place like this. Karadachi Yomogi. Here's a nice field of that uh, Karadachi Yomogi, which is great as tempura. Some people make it into tea. It's said to have medicinal properties. Omae. <laughs> As you can see, you cut that off just above the root there, just maybe a centimeter or less above the ground. Okay, so as he said, for tea, if you want to have it as tea, you want to wait till it's bigger. And this is a perfect example of karadachi yomogi. <laughs> you see up there, the leaves up there? These little waterfalls are just everywhere. Love it. So while it's still pretty early in the season, we still got lots of kogomi, karadachi, yomogi, and fuki, and even a little bit of uh, hawasabi, the leaf wasabi plant. Please don't do this as a tourist um, unless you're with a local um, showing you or with someone showing you. Um, it can be really dangerous. There's no trails. It's easy, very easy to get lost if you don't know where you're going. And you could also pick something poisonous and uh, get yourself in trouble. So I'm showing you this um, hoping to spark your interest and make you want to seek someone out and go with a local and uh, learn about this great uh, tradition. You can buy just about all of these uh, wild vegetables at little local farmers markets because people go out and pick them and then sell them there. And so you can still taste the great flavor of the mountains even if you can't come out here and forage yourself. He's put some kogomi 
these fiddleheads into the hot water and we're gonna have instant ramen with the uh, hokumi. Something very unhealthy. <laughs> this delicious but not so great uh, instant ramen. And then we're also gonna have that with the um, very healthy fresh mountain kogumi. Interesting mix. <laughs> So we've got the kogumi going into the instant ramen. Kogumi mountain ramen. Mm. 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 Hopefully this is just the first of many videos I'll do this year on foraging for wild vegetables in Tohoku. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments you might have about foraging in Japan. Um, I'll do my best to answer them or ask someone who knows much better than I do. I've got more photos of various wild vegetables as well as hiking and other things on my Instagram account, which is Quinlan. So please follow me on Instagram if you're an Instagram person. And I'll see you on the trails.